Last time on Poorly Abridged Genshin Storytime, the Traveler and Pylon agreed to continue helping Albedo, investigating the dangerous doppelganger disruptions while participating in the Adventurer's Guild activities and plan to reconvene in a few days to discuss what they find out. Which is nothing! Although Albedo did find footprints of a similar size to his own all over the mountain, which narrows things down to... Midway through their conversation, they're interrupted by a plot quake. Upon further investigation, we find out that Eula, Bennett, and the other one have been stuck on Dragonspine for the last four days unable to reach the base camp despite canonically having access to gliders, only serving to emphasize the question, did you two really investigate around the mountain at all? How did you not find out about this? Fortunately, Gerald has apparently been left somewhere safe doing exercises for the last four days. I bet he's loving this instructor trainee thing. After a prodigious display of not having any idea how luck works, Bennett loses his anal virginity to an icicle, Eula treats Amber like a lost labradoodle, and Albert Beto invites everyone back to the lab for dinner. What follows is a wholesome and heartwarming evening of camaraderie and friendship, involved <laughs> Bennett talking in his sleep. <laughs> Amber and Eula go to literally freeze their tits off. What the heck happened with the face? Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. The next day, the group sets out again for base camp and are immediately caught in an avalanche. The Traveler displays a level of heroism that could only be described as meh. Eula, should we go help Amber? What? No, come on! Concerned for the safety of Bennett and Albedo, the group attempts to hurriedly work their way down the treacherous slope to- oh. Right. While Bennett is located immediately, walking off his concussion, Albedo is nowhere to be found. Not even under all those piles of rocks! Where could he be? Oh, there he is. Wow, these are some pretty low-stakes avalanches around here, huh? Now that the group is all back together, the Traveler begins to sense a disturbance in the plotline. It sure is cold, but the view is amazing. <sighs> Isn't it, Eula? Hmm. <sighs> Eula? Sorry. I wasn't listening. What did you say? I was just thinking. Whenever I've met up with you at Dragonspine in the- Sorry, I wasn't listening. Albedo suggests that they get a move on and head to the base camp, then immediately starts leading the group uphill. Not suspicious at all. Wait up, everyone. I can tell the four stars need some rest. We should stop here and recover our strength. Ah, uh, thanks. Despite saying that I come here all the time, I hadn't realized how much climbing we had to do to get to the bottom of the mountain. You hit your head earlier, didn't you? Haha, <laughs> I've deceived them all. Now I can use the element of surprise to attack head on from the low ground. Strategy! The rest of the scene is actually really great, so I won't make a joke about it. Except to ask, who was the absolute troglodyte who gave Bennett the Traveler's Handy Sword? Mihelio, do you even play this game? As our heroes muster their strength against the deceptive doppelganger, he unleashes his ultimate attack- Oh, damn. Twinsies. In the weeks leading up to 2.3, there was a lot, and I mean a lot, of speculation regarding the reason behind the scene we just saw. Why Albedo was attacking Eula? Why he could use the cryo element? Was Albedo one of the Fatui Harbingers? Undercover in Mondstadt using a delusion? Did the Abyss Order perhaps use Durin's power to corrupt Albedo? like they did with Devalin. Maybe Albedo has secretly been a sort of Operation Phoenix orchestrated by Gold to resurrect her consciousness after hundreds of years. Or maybe, just maybe, it's like just a, a weird whopper flower. <sighs> okay. After defeating the nefarious Nightshade, the group confronts Albedo, demanding an explanation about how this being could have arose, to which he replies, eh, this place is weird. From there, Albedo performs an impressive magic trick, where he pulls a rabbit, a solar isotoma, 50 feet of tied together handkerchiefs, and, most impressively, an explanation for how a Whopper flower could have become a functional five-star character directly out of his ass. Eula asks why the imposter attempted to abduct a 10-year-old boy and take him to a monster-filled wasteland in the last episode, to which Albedo responds, maybe it wanted to experience what it felt like to be human. 
Going to try not to look into that too much. Albedo explains how he had used the avalanche to hide from the group and tempt the, let's call him, Susbedo, thank you Rod, into revealing itself to take Albedo's place. From there he followed the group and waited for his moment. But he wonders how the Traveler had noticed Susbedo too. The Traveler points out that Susbedo doesn't have a neck tattoo, which begs the question, why didn't you say anything earlier? That's a pretty obvious tell if you noticed it, and you just followed along directly behind him without saying anything? You know that the others have been stuck on this mountain for like half a week, right? After descending the mountain and at last reaching the base camp, the group discovers that Cyrus and the other members of the Adventurous Guild aren't around. They assume that they are still training on the mountain, the mountain that they had just been saying was more dangerous than they had ever seen it before, and make no further comments before disbanding to get some rest. Albedo and the Traveler agree that something is still amiss. Albedo explained that ironically, the mark on his neck that the Traveler used to identify the true Albedo was a mark left behind by the process that Rhyndaughter used to artificially create Albedo in the first place. However, instead of attributing the mark's absence on Susbedo to a simple mistake in recreation, Albedo suggests that the <clears throat> mutated whopper flower had enough alchemical knowledge to recognize the mark for what it was and purposefully abandon the mark in order to become a more perfect human replication. A level of backwards ass thinking that only the most ingenious of idiots could have concocted. <sighs> Then some convoluted bullshit happens and Paimon and Albedo decide to have a storytelling competition? I don't know, they'll probably have forgotten all about it by the beginning of the next act. The chapter ramps up with an M. Night Shyamalan level twist, where Albedo reveals that a failed experiment of Rhyndaughter's, another being that was created during the primordial human experiment, is actually the most likely cause of these incidents and the scene ends with Albedo drawing his sword and walking away into the wilderness to confront this being on his own? What the hell, Mihoyo? This is the good part! Why are you doing this to me?